I am with Jahaira Gonzalez, who is the Director of Outreach at Destination Tomorrow. Hello and welcome to iWay. Thank you for having me. What has your experience been with silicone? Have you ever used it? So when I first got introduced to silicone, I was about 21. There was a, a trans woman that I had met in a club, and um, she was telling me, you know, I love your look, but you know, if you ever needed enhancements, you know, here's my card, give me a call. I started off with my face first, and it got to the point where I would say that I got addicted to it. When I kept going to her to get injections, you know, uh, she had told me, that was it. I can't do no more. I think you have enough in your face. Whereabouts in your face did you have the silicone? So, um, when I first got injections, um, I did my cheekbones. And what happened was that um, when I constantly kept going to do my cheeks, you know, obviously that's where it stays at, so it kept building up. And when it kept building up, it started to look almost like um, a Muppet. <laughs> you ever seen the Muppets that have the high cheekbones and right, yeah. all this right here was skinny. And I was living like that for two years. And I thought that this was something that, you know, I really wanted. And then the regrets that are coming along. Because now all I have is just cheekbones and my side is all sunken in, you know? And that wasn't the look that I really wanted to go for. So then I had to think, like, what am I gonna do? So I went back to her and I spoke to her about, like, you know, how can I reduce my cheeks? And she had told me, well, let's do cortisone shots. And cortisone shots is- Is this all painful? Yes. How painful? Um. Very painful, you could say, because once you start doing the base shot and then afterwards you keep going back, yeah, you start feeling your skin to kind of stretch out and you it's almost like you're feeling like a, a popping sound inside your skin, mm -hmm. you know? And um, when I had told her about going back into the cortisone, when I had told her about that, um, you know, I wanted to kind of bring down the volume of my face and she had told me, well, we have cortisone shots and I said, okay, well, let's try it. And she explained to me, well, the cortisone is like almost like acid, so what we're gonna do is that I'm gonna inject you. That sounds in, painful as hell. Yes, I'm gonna inject you inside your cheeks, and within a couple of days, you will see... A reduction. A, redu a slight reduction. Did it work? To be honest with you, I didn't really see too much of a difference. So then did you try silicone anywhere else in your body, or was that it? Yes, you know, I had to kind of like, find another source of like kind of feminizing my face even more. So then I decided to um, pump my jawline because again, like I was saying, when I was younger, my jawline was very strong. So what she did was she said, okay, so if you don't want no more high cheekbones, we could kind of match everything together. So let's pump your jawline. So I started playing with my jawline. I started playing with my chin and I start, you know, once I started, you know, once I finished with my face, I saw that my face was coming together. So it almost looked like, you know, I was just like kind of a chunky girl with a chunky face. Mm -hmm. And um, the next step I did was I decided to do my body. And she did my hips, my buttocks, my calves, and she started doing my top and bottom lip. Okay. What has your overall experience been like with silicone? Have you had any complications? Um, yes. I started to notice that um, I was getting burning sensation, especially on my um, jawline area. I went to the doctors. I spoke with my primary care doctor about it. Um, of course, you know, they did scans and stuff like that to see like if there was any type of infections. Was there any shame at all? Yes. Definitely. What was the shame about? The shame was about just like walking outside every single day and just having people looking at me and staring at me and, and I just like felt like I didn't even belong into society, you know? And and these wasn't stares of like, you know, smiling and saying you look good. These were stares as like, you know, well, you look like a monster or what is that and you know? I'm sorry. So because of that I started getting into depression. 
Mm. Well, I'm glad you're not there anymore. Um, so, of course, you know, as a trans woman, you know what I'm saying, we always find the imperfections that we have, mm -hmm. and we always want more. Do you still want more now? Um, silicone? Yeah. No, absolutely not. How come? Um, so, once I started getting the, the burning sensation in my face, um, I decided to um, save up some money, and I got it removed. And that was a little pricey. I had to come out of, like, I paid, like, almost 4500 to remove. Mm -hmm. um, and I still have more to go. But um, that was the first step. And as far as my body, um, when I got injected into my buttocks and into my hips area, um, she would use, like, 1% of um, the anesthesia. And because of that, they kind of like left marks on my body, like stains, like little um, black stains. So I had to go and tattoo everything around it. So that way, you know, nobody was really noticing it. Yeah. You could okay. Say. And how's, I mean, have you had any health implications other than the burning? Um, thank God, no. I think you were very lucky. You know, from what I've read, yes. you were very lucky that A, the person that you went to had clean substances that yes. were, that, and also the fact that she had the ethics to tell you when enough was enough. Mm -hmm. um, most people don't have access to people like that. Yes. And would you say that you've heard stories of other people having less lucky experiences than yourself? Um, of course. Um, so many of my girlfriends who have went to different places to get pumped, um, some of them never even made it out of the basement or out of the person's apartment or hotel. As in they died? Yes. There and then? Yes. I didn't know you could die immediately from silicone. Yes, because once the silicone, you know, and, and it's depending on who's injecting you. Yeah. You know, if they go too deep, if they go too deep, it could travel. Because it, it goes go into, into your, your bloodstream. Lungs. Yes. So it goes so that I've heard about this. So it goes mm -hmm. into your bloodstream and then it reaches your lungs almost yes. immediately, so you can't breathe and then mm -hmm. you die. Oof, I'm sorry that that's how you've lost your friends. Yeah, thank you. And there are also cases I've heard of it disfiguring people. Most definitely. You know where maybe they don't even know. Maybe they don't have a primary caregiver and they don't even know that something's being rejected by their mm -hmm. body. And I've seen myself where it's not worked and the body's kind of rejected it and it mm -hmm. turns out not to look the way that someone had wanted it to look and so then it's so expensive as you know mm -hmm. from having to then try and remove that or fix that that's so much harder because it creates so much scarring inside the body most definitely so what advice do you give to young people who come in and they maybe can't access uh, proper health care because it's too expensive and they come to you and they say, I really want to match on the outside the way I feel on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about getting silicone. What do you tell them? I tell them absolutely not. Definitely don't do it. It's not worth it. And to be honest with you, it's like I don't even think, and, and I can only speak for myself and for the trans community, I could say. Um, nobody's really doing that anymore. You know, as far as my community, there are insurance now that are covering for procedures for trans men and women, you know, so now the girls don't have to worry about, you know, going to these places to get silicone done in their breasts or in their face or in their bodies because now um, Medicaid is actually paying for these procedures to do facial feminization, to do body contouring, to do um, breast implants. Well, thank you so much for Good sharing your story about that. I hope that that travels, because I think a lot of young people who follow Ai Wei, a lot of them don't have family members they can turn to for advice about these things. And it's so great that you also work for a company, Destination Tomorrow, which yes. I hope people will go out and look up. But thank you for the work that you do and for coming to talk oh, to me today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you.